In this tutorial, we are going to assemble all the parts that we made for our knuckle joint. So let's go ahead, quickly save the file, and let's call it knuckle joint assembly. Okay. Great. So you've got an empty file. The first thing we need is the origin to be on. Okay. And this time we are going to understand something called components and how is it different from bodies okay so when we made these individual parts they were all cat bodies and they were not actually components and components are basically individual cat parts that do not relate to each other and do not have any reference basically so if you modify one component there won't be any effect on the other one so we'll start by importing all the parts that we made into this design obviously we don't want to make all of them again we are just making an assembly so you can just right click on the part and click on insert into current design if you have not saved your file till now fusion will ask you to save the file first so go ahead and do the same process for all the parts don't worry if they don't align properly right now that is fine so just go ahead and insert all of them one by one don't worry if they don't align no problem at all okay one way to know that you've got all the parts even if they overlap each other is that you can individually select all of them okay and this time we don't have a folder called bodies because these are, as I said, different components. Okay, so a couple of things. First thing you should notice is this chain, which basically means that this part is just represented in this drawing and is not actually editable over here, okay? And what that means is that if, for example, in this CAD environment of this file, if you, for example, start to make any changes for example i start a new circle you don't have to do this just to show you if you start a new circle and you try to cut it through the knuckle pin what you will notice is that it actually cannot cut okay because this knuckle pin does not actually exist in this assembly it's just represented there okay so that is really good and if i save that extrusion you can see that it just created a new part or a new body rather than a different component and was not able to modify the knuckle pin at all okay so i'm going to undo that i don't even need the sketch in this file we are going to assemble these parts properly and for that we are going to use the assemble workspace so let's see if we can first understand how do these parts go together so if I put these two images, so this is our final assembly that we want to achieve. Just waiting for these keystrokes to go away. So this is the final assembly that we want to achieve. And these are the individual parts. We briefly discussed it, but a way to assemble these would be to have the eye end first, then assemble the fork end correctly on top of it so that it sits like that. Then we put the knuckle pin from the top. Then we put the collar from the bottom to restrict its motion to restrict the motion of knuckle pin and then we put a pin through the collar and through the knuckle pin okay and these are the same steps we are going to follow so let's go ahead and hide all of the parts apart from our eye end okay okay so once you've got all the parts hidden apart from your I end the first thing we want to do is to ground one of the parts so that it doesn't move anywhere for that you can right click on that part name and you can click on ground and that basically means that if you've got this pin sort of thing uh, the symbol on the component symbol it just means that this part is pinned and cannot be moved okay in reference to this we will be making the rest of the joints so let's turn the fork end on the fork end is not correctly assembled right now and i turn the origin off so that you can see it so fork end is like this 
and it's not correctly assembled okay so what we need to do is we need to go to the command called joint click on joint and the first thing we need to do is to select where the joint should be okay so for that i would recommend for the first time at least you click on this circle and then you select this circle and something amazing happens the part just moves to its correct place okay i'll quickly show you again so if you go to joint uh, you can by the way read the whole description that comes when you hover over we need to select two components to create a joint between them okay and there are different types kinds of joints that exist if you go to motion you can explore different kinds of joints but before that we need to position the parts correctly for that we will use the simple mode there are between two faces and two edge intersection as well but we are going to use the simple mode in this case and we just need to identify two edges that are coincident in the assembly and for that i'm going to use this circular edge and I know that it is aligned and coincident with this I end, right? And that's why the part immediately moves to the correct position. Okay, but now we need to specify the type of motion between them. And we, if we select the rigid motion or the rigid type, you can actually preview the animation as well. And Fusion will show you that it's a fixed joint. Okay, so nothing can move but you can actually change it to a revolute motion and you can see that the fork actually spins around right obviously something wrong is happening because it's going through the part which should not happen and we'll fix that in a minute but what i want you to notice is that we can actually have a revolute joint motion okay so once you've got that go ahead and click ok and let's go ahead and assemble the rest of the parts as well so the knuckle pin let's see if you can figure it out the same process you go to joint you select two edges that are coincident so this bottom edge in the knuckle pin is coincident with the top edge of our fork end okay so in reality, it should actually be a slider joint where your knuckle pin can actually move up and down. Okay, so to keep it realistic, we are going to make a slider joint, right? Okay, and in reality, we don't really want that sliding motion to happen. And for that, we have the collar, right? Okay, so if you've got a lot of origins turned on, even if your origin is off, it might be due to one of the origins on in one of your parts okay so you can turn that off as well okay coming back to the collar now to assemble the collar let's hide everything let's go to the joint command let's select this edge and we know that it is actually at this periphery and it actually is a revolute joint because it is ideally able to revolve around the knuckle pin okay so i've turned everything on i'm going to click okay so it's looking nice okay and you if you quickly want to see if your holes are aligned or not you can turn the collar off and see if your collar hole is aligned with your knuckle pin hole or not if it does not you can actually just drive the joint that we created so it will be the last joint in your joints folder right click on that and click on drive joints and most probably you will have to rotate it by 90 degrees or maybe minus 90 and then you should see that they are aligned in my case it was already aligned so i don't have to do it okay the next one is the pin so for that we'll hide all the other parts we'll start a new joint you will select the surface turn everything on and this time make sure you select the cylindrical surface so that the pin aligns properly yeah and 
that's basically it but what we want is the position of the pin to be correct so let's click on a flat view and we can actually drive the pin inside okay and you might have to adjust this a little bit so i think in my case it's 35 where it sits nicely in the center so i'm going to do that and i'm going to click ok and that essentially is your knuckle joint assembled it might not be looking exactly how it looks in the assembly that's basically because the fork end is rotated and we can do that very simply so you can do it a couple of ways but the easiest would be to click on your joint that is related to the revolute joint between the eye end and the fork end click on drive joint and then you can drive it around okay so i think if i rotate it by 90 it's exactly how it looks in the assembly okay so this is your assembly completed that's perfectly fine and that should be sufficient for your engine project as well make sure once you've made a movement uh, if you do capture position that position will be captured if you don't then it will come back to its original position after you've made a motion in the joint okay one nice thing that exists in fusion is basically called a motion study okay and that basically is if you want to quickly animate some of your joints you can do that uh, there is a better way using the animation workspace which we will see in another tutorial but if you quickly want to animate some of your joints you can explore this and maybe you can give it a try yourself i am quickly going to show you how it works and then you can spend more time playing around with it okay so if i have a timeline and I select specific points in that timeline I can specify the exact angles I want that joint to be okay then I can select a loop or I can just do it once I can also control how fast I want it to be and if I press play I can see that happening okay so there are a couple of problems in this that first of all your fork end should not be passing through the eye end and to fix that we can actually set the limit of the joint so after you've stopped the motion study if you have uh, make sure to revert to the position okay so to set the motion limit you can right click on the joint that you want to set the limits for go to edit motion limits Make sure you have maximum and minimum selected. You can change it to essentially whatever value you want to test. For example, if I set it to 180. Now, if I drag it around, I can actually just pull these parts around. You can see that my, even if I try to take it further, my joint doesn't go any further. Okay. And you can also check animate joint and see how it moves. This should be a very easy way of making animations. There's a proper way of doing it, but this should be sufficient for your engine project. 